I wasn't gonna do a video and then I said, you know what? Let me show them how I make my uh, vegan meat pie. Uh, for the Canadians, Thanksgiving is tomorrow, which is Monday, what day are we today, Erica? We're the 7th. We're the 7th. So Monday, uh, October the 8th is gonna be the Canadian Thanksgiving. And what I did was, I'm gonna make some stuffed peppers and you have that recipe up. Uh, that's going to be one of our dishes we're going to make. I did peel some potatoes, which I have uh, on the bur burner. They're going to be boiling. And I pulled out some of my seitan meat that I had in the freezer where I'm going to mince this up. And I'll show you. I already have some minced. And I'm going to mince the rest of it. And then we're going to put together a meat pie or show you what the stuffing of my meat pie is going to be like. So I am going to continue... Where is my adding my meat that I defrosted last night? I also had the meat in a little bit of the broth that I had cooked it, uh, cooked the meat in. So I'm saving this because this is going to be good if, when I make a gravy um, or if I want to add some flavor to my meat pie. So I'm going to put that aside and not throw that out. But I will mince some more of my meat and we're going to put that aside until our potatoes are cooked and then we're going to cook. A little, I'm going to do a little bit at a time so I do this right. And then we're going to cook up some celery and some uh, mushrooms. And I'm going to show you what I use to put in my stuffing. And that's how I want it. Now, the best thing about like when I make my meat, I always have, you see this could be uh, shish kebab meat, it could be any kind of meat, or you can mince it up and use it in any other dish. So when you make seitan, um, make a nice batch of it and break it apart the way I did this one. Uh, I actually broke it apart before I dropped it in the water. I just with scissors, I would snip it in. I think there's a video up on how I make my, um, my shish kebab meat. And very simple. And then if you make a lot of it, what you could do is bag some, put it in the freezer so you have it when when you need it. Uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, I want to make shish kebab, but I don't have time. All you have to do is maybe uh, if you bag them separate, you could pull out a couple of bags. You could either make shish kebab or you can make stew meat. It really is up to you. Or you could make like a stir fry with this. You could even cut these in smaller pieces if you want. I'm going to just show you on here. But if you want, you can make a stir fry and just cut the, your meat in smaller pieces and you can make a stir fry with this meat. So this meat is very versatile. Oh, duh. Can you see I'm doing too many things at one time? I'm preparing myself today so I don't have to uh, kill myself tomorrow. So I'm gonna keep adding this meat. So I'm gonna keep adding this meat to my, my bin here. And then we're gonna add potatoes and other delicious stuff to it. And then we're gonna be able to use this to fill a crust, a pie crust, or you could even make, uh, you could use pastry dough if you want to make it that way. There's so many ways you can use this meat. So very easy to make meat pie, even though you are vegan. A lot of people think that because you're vegan that you can't make some traditional dishes. And I'm making a French tortilla. And let me tell you something, you can make whatever you want as long as you have some seitan. And if you don't want to use seitan, you can even use tofu if you want. It really is up to you. Okay, so I am going to wait while my potatoes cook. And then I'm going to come back and show you what else I'm going to do to put inside this dish. So, don't be afraid. Remember, um, our food, whatever you eat, let it be a pie, a meat pie, let it be a sausage. You're tasting the extras that you put into your dish. Start adding spices and herbs to my dish. That is what you're gonna taste. Example, when you make a meat pie, you're gonna put some nutmeg, you're gonna put some cloves. Those are very 
uh, strong flavors that you find in these dishes and that is what's going to give you that oh wow that tastes just like tortilla so don't be afraid to get creative and like I said put lots of stuff in the freezer for yourself this way you don't have to kill yourself when you come home pull out your, your meat ahead of time or like I said if you're making tofu uh, pull it out the night before and especially if you're making your seitan uh, if you have seitan in the freezer pull it out the night before and then uh, the day after you can season it how you want or you could even make your pies and then refreeze it again and then all you have to do is pull out your pie and put it in the oven so uh, very easy to eat vegan you don't have to kill yourself i know it's nice a lot of people go to the store they buy what they want and then they put it in the oven but let me tell you something a home cooked meal is the best meal you're gonna have so don't be afraid to uh, get adventurous and start making some of the dishes yourself so i am gonna put this aside and um when i'm finished with the potatoes i'm gonna show you what i'm gonna fry up and what i'm gonna add to this and this is gonna be ready for me to fill my crust i also want to show you uh the other day we went out we went for a short walk really didn't have time to really uh find a lot of mushrooms uh plus somebody else noticed me picking mushrooms so uh, he asked what they were and I basically told him go ahead and pick up the rest yourself and bring them home to try it But these are what you're going to be finding uh, in the fall. Uh, they're tiny puff balls and Some of them are white on the outside some look like they have little bumps on the ins uh, on the top when you touch it You can see it the little the little white stuff comes onto your finger But it is a puff ball when this is done. You'll see a little hole and if you touch it, spores come out. But these are very much edible when, I'll show you, if you cut one open inside and it is pure white, you know that your mushroom is edible. If you see a little bit of yellow or way too much yellow and then, or maybe green, um, that means they're ready to go to spore. You don't want to eat that. Just leave it and let the mushroom do its thing where it's going to let out the spores for the next batch of mushrooms that's going to grow the year after. But because I shared my mushrooms yesterday, I just got a little of these, but I'm going to use them in today's dish. See how beautiful they are? So these are going to be some of the things that I'm going to use today. And I have some king mushrooms that I bought. Uh, and I don't want those to go to waste, so I'm going to use also some king mushrooms in this recipe. But you can use uh, whatever mushroom you like. Shiitake is a good mushroom to use because it's a very strong mushroom. I might put some to soak now, and which I will do. I'll show you. Let me see. Is this one good? Yeah, that one's good. Remember, they have to be white inside. If you're going to pick up puff balls, and it should not have any gills. Uh, I just want to show you. You see how that little pointy end? It's actually very pointy. And what you do is just twist it off. And then you bring them home um, but they should have no gills whatsoever it should just be attached uh, to a little bit of rooted mycelium right at the end and you'll find these either along a tree along pathways um, you don't really have to look hard to find these they're all over the place especially wooded area even on the side of the road and sometimes they're white on the outside sometimes they're these tan colored ones but you have to make sure that when you open it up that they are white inside then you know you can eat them so um, I'm gonna take some shiitake mushrooms which I'm gonna add to this I'm only gonna take a couple because they're very strong and I have other mushrooms that I'm gonna mince up so um, I'm gonna show you how simple it is okay well I had a big bag of shiitake mushrooms hanging so now I'm gonna have to open these up now these are dry shiitake mushrooms and I'm going to take just three of these because they're very strong in flavor. And I'm going to add this to some water. There we go. I'm going to add them to some hot water. And just let them do a thing. This is going to make... Um, there goes that mushroom skin again. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is going to uh, make also some flavored water, which you can keep to throw into uh, your, your pot if you're making a gravy. But, uh, yeah, very simple. You just take them, add them in water. And if you have something where something heavy that you could put on top, 
so we can actually keep them submerged in the water so I'm gonna put this aside and when they're soaked and they're soft I'm gonna be able to use them so here's my king mushrooms now I want to show you something you see the end part of this if you see, you see that white okay there's gonna be a video for you guys but you could actually grow uh, you could actually grow uh, mushrooms by taking this and turning it, turning it into mycelium. I'm going to show you one. This is wood pellets that I soaked and turned it into, I don't want to touch it with my hands, turn it into uh, crumbles and I put like the butts, except these were my, um, my enoki mushrooms and look at this. Do you see what's happening over there? That is mycelium. This is going to help make mushrooms believe it or not this is going to consume all this wood and it's going to encase it and then we're going to be able to grow some enoki mushrooms uh, this is the first time i'm doing it this way i'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that it's going to work out but isn't that exciting and that's just by taking the butts off uh, either the king, the king mushrooms or the enoki mushrooms and hopefully this is going to encase the whole thing and we're going to be able to maybe grow some mushrooms this way. So I'm going to put this away and I'm going to use only the tops of these mushrooms because I have another recipe for the bottom. So here we go. I am going to take uh, this much off the top and I'll see if I really need more mushrooms, I'll just take some more. But for now, I am going to take only the tops and put these back in the bag because I can make some scallops for my daughter with that and see we don't want to take that part because that's the part that I'm going to also try to see if I can grow some mushrooms winter is here guys I can't go mushroom picking so I am going to do my best to uh, grow some at home and see what happens there's a video, hopefully there's going to be a video for you to see how I'm growing some mushrooms at home. So I'm going to mince these up for now and then I'm going to throw those in a pan. My potatoes are done and that is hot. So I'm going to put my potatoes to cool. Here we go. Now I'm making more than one pie, but I'm just going to put them in here and they're going to cool off and they're going to be ready for me to use when I need to use them and I am going to fry up some ingredients to add to my meat pie. Now I'm not going to throw away my water just in case I need it because that water has got a lot of flavors from the potatoes so I'm not going to throw it yet but I will chop up some vegetables to throw into a pan to fry up. Okay, push that over. Okay, I'm going to throw my mushrooms in here. Making smaller pieces just to give it a head start. And we're going to turn these into little bits. I'm going to mince these up. Just give it a fast chop. And they're going to go into a pan. So I'll show you in a bit. And there's my mushrooms. Now how much mushrooms is really up to you. The more mushrooms you put in, the more you have that nice umami flavor. Uh, plus I'm making two pies, so it's going to be, um, it's going to be perfect for the amount that I'm making. So I'm using some good olive oil. Using some good olive oil, we're going to add my mushroom bits oh. here that I put Erica can I have my spatula love I don't have to use my fingers 
Perfect. Thank you. I love the smell of mushrooms. And that's how you get a great umami flavor. You need to use things that come from the earth, such as mushrooms. Those help. Anything fermented, those help. And you're going to get some great, great umami flavors. So now I'm going to chop up my onion and throw it also in the food processor. Oh, my little piece of mushroom. I'm going to throw it in with the onion. And isn't this a great idea because once you've wrapped that up, your counter is clean. You don't even have to go back and clean your counter. There we go. I'm just going to help cut it up a bit so it's going to be easier to chop. There we go. This is perfect. And we're going to fry these up. Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch me fry this up, but basically you want these to uh, lose its water. There we go. Now, if you want, you can add some salt now. That helps reduce some of the, take away some of the water. Help you cook it out faster. And then we're going to season the meat and add more salt if we need it. There we go. These are, yeah, soft enough. I think I'm going to put these through also. And what's good about these, uh, they have a whole different texture. So you want to break those up in smaller pieces. That should be good. Okay. So, yeah, if you're going to do this at home, uh, soak your shiitake mushrooms. Uh, your dry shiitake mushrooms ahead of time and then when you're mincing uh, your other mushrooms you can simply throw those in and it's going to be easier for you to mince them but what's nice about this it's it almost mimics that little bit of almost like a those harder bits you find when you're eating a, a meat pie like a real meat pie oh it's hard to explain but once you get this under your teeth, you know what I'm talking about. Plus, it adds all those great, great flavors. So here we go. I do have to chop up some celery. I shall wait. Chop my celery first. Now, celery, I'm not going to put way too much celery. I'm just going to cut. Okay, you do want your celery in smaller smaller bits so try and get them as small as you can and you don't need a lot of celery either but that little bit of celery just does it I think that's more than enough so I would say a small a small celery stick that chopped up really really fine or small bits and if you have a good food processor, you could even try and put it in there if you want. There we go. That's all I'm using. Put that one away. Okay, now I can cook up my ingredients. Oh, jeez. There we go. And then we're going to add it to our meat. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So I am going to show you, let me just lay down more paper because I don't like to clean my counter and it's going to make my life easier this way. Um, I've reduced the mushroom to half. If you saw how much there was already in here, uh, I would say I had about maybe two and a half cups of mushrooms, maybe even more. But again, that is really up to you how much you want to use. So I've reduced it by half and most of the water is gone out of it. But I don't want to take out all the water because that's going to add flavor to our dish. Here we go. And we're going to add some potatoes. Now I have about four potatoes that I cooked because I need it for something else. So I am going to use, I would say... 
maybe two potatoes and I'm gonna mash these up you don't want to over mash them either they don't have to be what you call creamy If you get little bits, that's okay too. So I'm just giving you an approximate, guys. I always cook where I have extra of everything. Now, a lot of people don't like doing that way, but you know what? If you have left, leftover uh, tortilla meat, you could always use it in a sandwich, almost like a pate. It's really not the end of the world. So to this, I'm going to add my mushrooms. And the oil. I did put quite a bit of oil in this because you want your tortilla to have that, what you would call fat. But again, if you don't want to use a lot of oil, don't use a lot of oil. We're just going to mix this up. Now I'm going to add my seasonings to this batch and then I'm going to add my meat to this. Okay, so we're going to start off with a good tortilla, French tortilla, has cinnamon in it. I'm going to use about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and then we're going to taste it. If we want to add some more, we will. So here is a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We're going to get some nutmeg and we're going to add a half teaspoon of that. There we go. And we're going to get some clove and we're going to put a half teaspoon of that. And we ran out of black pepper, so some black pepper. I would say about a half teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to mix this up. Then we're going to start adding our meat. Now how much meat do I have? I say I have about four cups of minced seitan. So I'm going to put a little at a time so it mixes in really good. I'm not adding salt yet because I did add salt to my potatoes when I was cooking it. Now the potatoes are, is going to be a binder, but we're also going to put some oats and that's going to help hold everything together. But we want to taste it first to see if we need to add any more nutmeg or if we want to add salt. But it is very simple to make a good French tortilla or a Canadian tortilla. And this is done all vegan without having any animals killed for this dish. Mmm, my God, so good. I will add extra nutmeg. Add another half a teaspoon. A sprinkle more of cinnamon and yes salt and black pepper there's my black pepper the only one I have now 
I do have white black uh, white pepper that's brown. I could use that if I want. And some salt. Where is my salt? Not too much because I already have, like I said, in my potato water. Some ex Now these are quick oats. You don't even need to uh, cook these because once the pie goes in the oven, it's going to cook in there. Plus it's going to pick up all that moisture and it's going to hold all your seitan together. So we're going to start off with half a cup and we're going to play it by ear. Now during World War II, this is what they used to make meat was oats. I have recipes on how to make uh, sausages or sliders, little mini burgers, with oats. So we're going to add more. And remember, if you have extra meat, do not complain or worry about it. Because you can make uh, Pop-Tarts, you can make... Um, what you call Jamaican patties, which is this leftover meat that you have. So don't be afraid if you have way too much meat, because I rather have than not have enough. So so far I've used uh, one full cup because that. Okay, so my camera shut off. I'm sorry, guys. What I was saying was, if you have leftover uh, meat, uh, if you're making one pie or two pies and you still have leftover, you can make um, um, Jamaican patties with this. Uh, you can wrap them in some pastry dough. There's so many things that you can actually make with this. You can even refreeze your... Uh, your stuffing and pull it out and do what you want to do when you need to. Now, so I'm going to put extra potatoes. So that was three potatoes that I used. And I'm going to put more oats. And if I have to add extra seasoning because that is the magic of your tortilla. Basically it's fatty and the flavors of the nutmeg the flavors of the uh, the cloves and the flavors of the cinnamon. That is your magic. So once you have that, you know that you're going to get the best tasting, I'm losing my stuff here, the best tasting tortilla ever. And the best part about oats, not only is it a great filler, but it also... is a good binder. So here we go. So I am going to put a little extra nutmeg, a little extra black pepper. Just taste your food. If the food tastes good for you, hey, you're the chef, right? You're the cook in your house. And remember, when you make food with love and no death in your food. There's no death in this food. This food is all about love. Let me tell you something. When someone eats your food, they're going to have the same, same love and the same. They're going to feel it. They're going to feel it in their food. So I am going to put some more black pepper. I am not putting, now if it was just for me, I would not, I would put hot stuff, but because my granddaughters won't be able to eat the, the hot stuff, I am leaving it out. But otherwise, if you want, you could even put a little bit. Okay, so that's one and a half teaspoon in this big batch of stuffing that I made. Of nutmeg, also cloves. I would say about maybe one teaspoon of cloves. And if you want extra, go ahead and put it in. Remember, you're the chef. And of course, we're going to put extra cinnamon. Because what's a tortilla without the cinnamon? So this is going to be perfect. I can feel it already. This is going to hold great in the pie. And you can taste all those 
umami flavors that's in this part. Very earthy taste. Really, really good. And I can tell you for sure it's good. Or Erica can tell you. Erica, how do you like the flavor? Uh, it's freaking delicious. It's freaking delicious. I like that. So we have our stuffing ready for our pies. If I had gloves on, I'd use my hands. I'm just going to taste it. My oh my. That's really good. Some extra fat. And salt. Where is my salt? I keep losing my salt. So that's it, guys. This is how you're going to make a French vegan, French or Canadian, French Canadian tortilla. If you find that your mixture is too dry, all you have to do is take some of that water that you soaked your mushroom in, or just take some extra potato water, and that's just going to help. Uh, Moisten up that, that stuffing. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.